<laughs> you're turning it off. <laughs> Jay turns it on, you turn it off. The happy clappers, they call them. <laughs> Doesn't matter because I know it's never easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So this is our first session at the, the Knights of the Magic Table. <laughs> exactly. I have extra heaters. Uh -huh. and, and it's all going to be beautiful and minerally because there's that beautiful smell of gas in each glass. <laughs> if you want the smell of gas, methane, I can provide that oh, for you. Okay. <laughs> so today we are going to taste the Beaujolais wine. Okay. So I prepared uh, five bottles. Okay. So one Beaujolais Nouveau, two Beaujolais Village Nouveau, and two Beaujolais Cru. Mm -hmm. Beaujolais, part of Burgundy, though often considered separate. Beaujolais, for the most part, is Gamay. Right. right. There's a little bit of Pinot. There's some Pinot, yeah. And uh, producing a wine, fruity and delicious, particularly at the crew level, these wines can afford wonderful value, and our great food wines can be very delicious. And so Beaujolais Nouveau as well, if you ask a bank manager, What's the world's best wine? He'll tell you, Beaujolais Nouveau. Why is this so? Because it is converted from grapes hanging on the vine to on your table, in your glass, in nine weeks. Everybody's happy and you don't have to borrow any money. Mm -hmm. But in order to make the wine uh, truly palatable within nine weeks, Beaujolais Nouveau, for the most part, is made by a process called carbonic maceration, whereby intracellular fermentation takes place. And that way you get brightly colored wine, and some people love it, a sort of candy apple character. Mm -hmm. Candy apple character? Yeah. yeah. Candy apple, sometimes there's, there's some, some banana. And that the bottom line is that most fermentations require yeast. So yeast is the primary driver of the fermentation to take sugar down to alcohol and carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide and heat. But with carbonic maceration, it begins without yeast. And so you have these whole berries and they get covered in a layer of carbon dioxide. And inside the grape itself starts this fermentation and it's different from other fermentations. Beaujolais Nouveau was by and large a, a marketing wine. On the other side, the crews, which are not made with carbonic maceration, can age beautifully, can age as well as very good burgundy and can last 20, 30 years. Yesterday and the day before yesterday, I went to stores, wine shops to buy Beaujolais Nouveau, but it was not easy to find them. And people working there didn't understand what it was. Yeah. And I had to explain that Beaujolais Nouveau is the new harvest wine, which arrives Thursday on the third week of uh, November. <laughs> then no, I no, I mean, I'm just shaking my head because you got people uh, in America working in liquor stores that do not know what Beaujolais Nouveau is. Yeah. I mean, what kind of training are they giving people like this? <laughs> no shit. I mean, <laughs> yes, I agree with you. So I explained that and then the service person uh, reacted like, oh, harvest wine. Then I went to another store, then I wanted a harvest wine, then he asked me, what is a harvest wine? <laughs> they just don't know, uh, Jay, they just don't know. <laughs> That's the reason why I have only one Beaujolais Nouveau today. <laughs> I wondered why you have only one, okay. I, I went to three different wine shops. Let's give a go. One Beaujolais Nouveau, two, two Beaujolais, Beaujolais Village Nouveau, and two, two Beaujolais Cru. Beaujolais. The Crus are all villages and the wine is grown in granite soils. Granite soils? Granite soils, yeah. I see. So a hint with Gamay, even though the color tends to be light, it has much more purple in it than Pinot Noir. I found for 21 to 24 dollars, 30 plus year old Cru Beaujolais, and the Cru Beaujolais was remarkably delicious and 24 dollars a bottle. Really? For 30, yeah. 30 plus here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Remember you and I went out and bought a bunch of Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. So I drank with Jay. The 98 uh, Latour. The 98 Latour, the last bottle. I've got one left myself. That was a little bit better than this uh, Beaujolais for the turkey. <laughs> G given the price, it should be, huh? It was excellent. Not the price that we paid for it. Patrick and I got a real deal on it. It was great. It was great. It was still great. Then, Patrick, 
A big difference in color between the first three wines and the last two. First three all have substantial amounts of purple, suggesting that they're younger wines. And the last two, no purple, I get red and some slight brick change at the rims, showing me that there's some age on the wines. Even though the first three wines are deeper colored, the fact that they're more purple and they have more primary fermentation aromas, and by that I mean banana and strawberry and bubblegum, especially on the first one. I'm presuming or deducing that the first three wines are the vintage 2020 Nouveau wines and the last two would be the Cru Beaujolais. And then looking at the first three, I got more of those primary carbonic maceration on the first one. Sort of thought that would have been the regular Nouveau. There was greater depth of flavor mm -hmm. and a bit more structure and the second and third wines, deeper fruit, less of the bubblegum characteristic. And I thought those would have been the Village Nouveau. And I liked those a bit better mm -hmm. than the first one. The first wine was fine. The fourth wine, I thought may have had a ladybug taint on it. There's a little bit of peanut on the palate and the nose. And it's a little bit green. I enjoyed the flight. So I've got nothing to add to that. I agree with everything Patrick said. I think wine number four was the least wine of them. I think wine number five was the best. And uh, I absolutely agree with, with uh, everything else. Uh -huh. So you also think uh, the no, I number one is Beaujolais Nouveau, and number two and three Beaujolais Village Nouveau. Yes, and the reason for that is basically what Patrick said. I found more structure and more stuffing in these two wines than in that one. I found this to be somewhat simpler. The Beaujolais Nouveau character, very well done. I searched for the places where I could buy Beaujolais Nouveau, and I found a wine store selling Beaujolais Nouveau 2018. <laughs> What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not meant to age. No? No, absolutely not. I mean, if you are drinking last year's Beaujolais Nouveau 2019 with this year's Thanksgiving turkey, you'll be very lucky to have something that makes you happy. Shall we see the bottle? Let's yeah. see the bottles. All right, you're all correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the first one is Beaujolais Nouveau, pretty label. Mm -hmm. 2020 Jean-Claude de Bon. Whenever I buy Beaujolais Nouveau, I just buy the cheapest bottle. Nice label. It's very fun, joy-filled, yeah. yeah, colorful, lots of fun. First one of the harvest. Hey, nice to have something fun about fucking 2020. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm with you on right? that one. 2020, we're tired of COVID. That is true. So this brought us a little joy. Uh-huh. <laughs> cheers. Here's to cheers. Beaujolais Nouveau. Cheers. cheers, cheers, cheers. Beaujolais Nouveau est arrivé. <laughs> arrivé. It's light, but it's sort of rich at the same time. It's got beautiful berry fruit and it's nice. Yeah, I like it very much. Of the two Village Nouveaux, I had a preference for the second one. Me too. Me too. Why is it so? Because I got a little bit of nuttiness on the finish that I perceived to have been slight oxidation. This one had the charm, absolute charm of Beaujolais Nouveau. This one was a better wine in terms of the, the underlying quality of the grapes, mm -hmm. but it lacked a little bit of charm. Mm -hmm. And then this one combined the gravitas mm -hmm. of the and second the, one with the charm. the charm of the first. Yeah, I agree. So shall I unveil? Please. Number two, Beaujolais Village Nouveau 2020. Henri Fessy. Another festive label. Yeah. Then number three. It's Georges Duboeuf. He's the classic specialist. He was at the, led the charge for Beaujolais Nouveau and marketing Beaujolais. So he became the king of Beaujolais. Then number four. Yeah, it's Beaujolais Cru. It is a Fleury 2016. L'Envoyé. And then number five. Morgon, 17. Also de Boeuf. Yeah, Le Vin Georges de Boeuf. It's amazing enjoyment for the price. When was your first time to have Beaujolais Nouveau? A gentleman never tells. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> when was your last time? Oh, it's been a while. I've drunk quite a lot of Beaujolais, mm -hmm. but Beaujolais Nouveau? I don't remember the last time. I haven't had Nouveau Beaujolais for several years. Yeah, me too. Though the Cruz, I buy the Cruz throughout the year. 
Usually I like fleury too, but yeah. this one is not that good. Fleury is usually um, more floral than, yeah. than Morgon. Yeah, Morgon's more You would more expect muscular. more structure from Morgon. For whatever reason, I'm sensitive to that peanut bit, and I'm getting both peanuts and some greenness. You mean uh, the peanut butter to paste on, uh, on bread, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's what the, what the ladybugs do. They fly in <laughs> with, with, a, with a jar. <laughs> And they paste some peanut butter on the grapes, fan it. <laughs> I like peanut butter, but I don't like it mixed with my wine. And there are many people who are confused about Beaujolais Cru and Beaujolais Nouveau. The majority of the people, they think Beaujolais wine cannot be aged. And they're wrong. Mm -hmm. They're right that Beaujolais Nouveau should not be aged. Though the Cru's can age beautifully for five years, 10 years, and I've had them even 20 or 30 years old, and they taste remarkably like old Burgundy. Cru Beaujolais, among the hidden gems price-wise, that still exists. On the label, you've got all these different names of the village. It's a little tougher for the consumer. Morgon, Fleury, Bruy, Chena. Peter's favorite, <laughs> Julianus. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Cote de Brie. But you have to know those names. That was the reason why I chose uh, these two bottles, because uh, I believe they are the most famous ones. As, yeah, uh, the, the most Cri. famous villages. Yeah. We're just scratching the surface. Sure. We'll stop telling you lies. <laughs> <laughs> lies. <laughs> we'll, tell you, we'll start to tell you the truth. <laughs> I thought you never told lies. Me? No, I didn't. About <laughs> wine? Never. Might get it wrong, but I don't lie. Please uh, subscribe and leave a like. <laughs> That's exactly right. Please subscribe uh -huh. and leave a like. Well, to his credit, uh, drinking the Latour Blind, he nailed it as a first growth. But then, you know, that's cheating too. He probably knew I would only serve him a first growth. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Not. <laughs> I was uh, resisting against the idea that uh, Peter was uh, serving me a first growth. But it was, it was really good. Hi. A different spot. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Not any fun for you not being blind tasted. So I thought I'll give you a blind taste because you right. know what the wines are, except for this one. That is true. <laughs> dun, 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 da, da, dun, dun, dun. For you, yes. <laughs> fun. fun. <laughs> and you can pour a little bit, and Peter and I. Yeah. Okay. Surprise. Only I know what it is. You know what it is. All right. I think. <laughs> I better check. <laughs> right. Cheers. Cheers. I know what it is by this just by the smell. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. This one is good. Mm. Look at the color. A lot of great change. This one is very Bordeaux blending. You think so? Yeah. Bordeaux blend as in the grape varieties or as in you think it comes from Bordeaux? As the grape variety. Varieties, yeah. okay. Correct. Correct? Oh my god. Pelicans. Pelicans? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bordeaux varieties, maybe a single Bordeaux variety, or something like that. But it doesn't feel French to me. Maybe more Italian to me. Mm. Correct. What's the variety? Okay, let's go to J first. The Merlot? Yes. Merlot it is. I agree. We have a few more bottles left, and then we're going to have to say goodbye to the, our Italian Merlot. Uh -huh. That's 1998. It's exactly the same vintage with the Chateau Latour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it holds well. I'll trade you two of those for one of those. All right. <laughs> no problem. Okay, when Take you're done. All of them. <laughs> you can keep that one. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, I love this one. Peter, what do you think about the location of the camera? For you. For it's hard for us to have a conversation and for me to look at the uh -huh. at the camera. Mm -hmm. Probably there would be much better for okay. me. For Patrick here and for Peter, yeah. you here. Yeah. And particularly that's a double win because a great shot of Patrick, great shot of me, and you're not even in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be in the picture like this. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter says like, the, like this, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> 이럴 땐이 와인 네이버 밴드로 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 
편하고 싸게 사실 수 있도록 제가 많이 도와드립니다. 다들 만족하시고 좋아하시더라고요.